Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Barry Chapel coming to you live, Hollywood, California, home of the Primetime Shopping Network Studios. My name is Barry Chapel. It's a Wednesday night art show and a lot of other stuff, too. So I sit back, have some fun. Wilson, I got to do a Floyd update. I'm talking to my dog, Pretty Boy Floyd. This dog was near dead. I found him at the dog park. He had been bitten by a coyote and shaken, and five ribs were broken. And I saw him there, and I took him to the vet, and he wore a, uh, a cast and everything. But now, look how happy little Floyd is. All 12 pounds. I'll show you some more. Floyd is just a happy-go-lucky. And he gets along well. Look at that. That is pretty boy Floyd. I, uh, Ashley is pretty sure that pretty boy Floyd is a Pomeranian, Pomeranian mixed with Chihuahua. You know, he just, he'll just, he can't quite jump up on the bed yet. He's getting there. He's very, very skinny. And I've been feeding him so much uh, chicken, turkey. But uh, there's a good, inquisitive, pretty boy Floyd. All 12 and a half pounds of him. And uh, I can't believe Petco shaved him like that. Look at that. He had hair. I take him to Petco and I told the girl, three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half, please. And at Petco, once you pick them up, before you see the dog, you pay and they go, do you want to leave a tip? And I, I gave him five, but I had another 20 in my pocket I was going to give him. Then I see they shaved my dog. I don't know. That's Floyd with Ginger. Yes. They get along fine. Floyd is very talkative to dogs around dogs where I live. She'll start barking if she likes them or dislikes. She'll, she, she can be a loud dog. He, he can be a loud dog. The, the vet says Floyd is five to seven years old. He acts a lot younger. There he is. Look at those ears, Wilson. You know who would be jealous right now if he was still alive? Ross Perot. Look at that. Floyd has Ross Perot ears. Uh, and anyway, that's the update on pretty boy Floyd. And uh, getting along fine. I got a big show tonight. I got Gregory Wilhelmy. I got Peter Max. I got an amazing... Azule that took Matt and Ashley both to translate it. It was in French, Wilson. Do you speak any French? No. I don't either. They add a lot of extra stuff, Wilson. You know, Theodore Roosevelt wanted to change the English language and shorten it. Nah. Didn't happen. Here's a Gregory Wilhelmy on the easel right now. That was painted by the Gregory Wilhelmy. Gregory Wilhelmy was born in Roundup, Montana. And uh, Gregory Wilhelmy gives a lot of talks, not only in Montana, but a lot of the states around. He has museum shows. Oh, yeah. And here's Gregory, the long road, you know, paintings from the Northern Plains. And he talks about how what used to be a mining town, and many of them around where he grew up in Montana have become, they've changed. And some businesses have completely just vanished. And there might be one or two left. You know, here's 
one of his showings he had Gregory will help me a matter of time he is one of the greatest artists he uses his coloring so well you can stare at one of his paintings and see something different every time the long road paintings from the northern plains now Gregory has amazing amount of private collectors banks towns oh here I, I even have a picture of him painting in uh, I think it was Billings Montana where he was painting a uh, give me a second he makes fun of happy times he painted this I'll show you a couple more pictures and then I'll show you the one of him painting as you enter the town he painted a huge building it almost looks like Wiley e. Coyote where you're gonna crash into the building it is uh, that's what Gregory does right here commissioned Billings Montana summer of 2002 that's Gregory Wilhelmy standing next to his painting so if you're driving into town and you look up you go where'd that building come from but it's just amazing and he does things that gets people to think about art I remember when he showed me this I think I even sold this painting on TV in 2009 passing glances that's Gregory Wilhelmy holding a painting where the road goes right through him and that's the type of art he can do better than almost anybody you you see here they're all grown up now but uh, that's Gregory Wilhelmy and his two twin daughters uh, they painted this uh, ram Big Horn Magic in Billings, Montana. It's Montana. And it just, he uh, just has a way, like this one painting he called Saturday Night Fever uh, at the C.M. Russell's Art Museum that hung there for a while. So I'm going to start with this one right here. It's painted on board. It is entitled uh, Bristol uh, Cone Pine 2002 Oldest Tree on Earth. 2893. Great Basin National Park, Nevada. The struggle to survive for 5,000 years has created the dramatic, tw tw dramatic twist and tortured beauty of this bristol cone pine now what gregory wanted to show you is a five thousand year old tree and he wanted to highlight it and this is an amazing piece and gregory will help me as one of the most successful i used to call him my cowboy artist and uh tell you what give me one got it right here oh look at this corporate collectors walker's grill billings montana at&t federal reserve bank of minneapolis philadelphia marriott hotels Oh, my first interstate bank, Denver. You go down, U.S. Air, Air Force, uh, Kodak. I mean, you're going down here. There's, Wilson, there's a hundred plus corporate collectors. But uh, 
And I'll tell you what, what do we have the retail out? I should have brought my glass. 35,000, right? Okay. Let me just see. I should have brought my glasses. I only have my sunglasses and I forgot my regular one. Yeah, 35,000. I'll tell you what. I, I want to see if anybody's watching me. This is so cheap. So cheap. This is a test. Did they make you do that when you were a kid, Patty? Yeah. Uh, in the 60s, if they think a missile's coming, hide under your desk. <laughs> like that's going to save you. Oh, this is too cheap. $1,000 to open. That's way too cheap. This was shown at museums. I think this was part of or one of his shows on the long road and how the mining towns were changing. Yeah, this would be cheap at 1000 But I put it up there. Wow. Bristol Cone Pines. Oil on panel. I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you one more. And then I'm going to start this backwards tonight, Ashley. Uh, Patty was... absolutely in love with this painting right here and she should be it's original oil on canvas it's signed on the front and signed on the back 2896 painted in 2021 it is their Cadillac broke down on the road to the family ranch the place went bust in the mid 50s and it's now owned by a tech billionaire I guess he owns a Cadillac, too. So, uh, that's what Gregory Helmy loves to paint. Situations like that, where you have a Cadillac break down and a billionaire bought the, all that property and he owns that old Cadillac, too. And Patty was talking. She was showing a picture. Hey, where's that picture you took? Of how the rust tones and everything. Patty went to, where'd you go? This Dove Springs. Palm Springs? Dove Springs. Dove. <laughs> Don't worry, America's most wanted. <laughs> they forgot. This was, she took this picture in Dove springs of an old car that they have used for decoration look at the rust tones this is a real car on patty's phone look at this cadillac that he painted right here and i'll tell you what i am going to uh want to get some oh look at that cadillac Cadillac problems. Is it really 30 by 48? 17 by 30. Okay. Yeah, 17 by 30. And here's what I'm going to do. Oh, this is... Oh, this is... I wish I brought my glasses. What does it say the retail is? 26,000, 26, yeah. That was at a museum show at one of the most prestigious museums in the whole uh, Northwest. I'll tell you what, here's what I'm gonna do. I just wanna see if anybody's out there watching me. It's lonely up here, Patty, it's a lonely gig. Tell you what I can, yeah, tell you what I can do, this is too cheap. 
Oh, this is too cheap. Don't do it, chapel. Don't do it. Tell the voices in your head not to do it. Don't do it, don't do it. This is too cheap. $800 to open. That's crazy. Part of a museum show. You got the history typed on the back by Gregory Wilhelmy, signed on the front and the back. Do you ever have any voices in your head, Patty? Uh -uh. What about you, Ashley? Do you have voices in your head? Do yours say the same thing as mine? You don't have to kill them over that. No, they don't say that. I, they don't say that. I'll tell you what. No, my, don't listen to the voices, Barry. No, uh, I'll tell you what. They're not getting an, let me, let me, Matt, I would like to start by running part two first. I want to give you an idea. Let me go to camera two when you get a second. This is not a little artist. I mean, this is the Gregory Wilhelmy. He is uh, sold to so many corporations, to private collectors, because he's trying to give people a realistic look at what happened to the mining towns uh, of Montana and North Dakota, South Dakota, parts of Colorado that used to boom. And then when the mines run out or things change, they're just empty. And that's what he's trying to show you with Cadillac problems. Take a look at this, and it's not that long. I'll see you on the flip side. How about that Cadillac could still work, Wilson? Little elbow grease. You get that one girl, that French girl from that uh, movie. Cool what? Cool Hand Luke. No, not Cool Hand Luke. Um, oh my goodness! I'll think of the name. Is it a car movie? The what? Is it a car movie? No. It's, uh, oh, oh, it's got, I well, got one kid, Ricky, I'm sorry your mom blew up. Um, I'll think of it. John Cusack. Is he ready to run it? Yep. Okay, here's part two. Gregory Wilhelm. I live in Montana and I'm an artist. And I paint pictures, a lot of pictures, of a lot of different things in a lot of different places. The hardest part of doing any painting is getting it started. And after you get a certain place with it, then it kind of starts to fall together on its own and it's easier to deal with. But when you're first starting it, you have to concentrate more to know for sure in your own mind what it is that you need to do to get a good product, a good picture. One of the problems about working outside is that it takes forever for oil paint to dry. So by adding some dryer into the white paint, that uh, allows me to get a better, faster drying time and to uh, have an easier time of completing my painting. 
I use a medium that I specially mix up for outdoor use, get them some dryer in it, and I, uh, after I have completed a preliminary, preliminary sketch of what it is that the main things that I want to paint, and I put on a brush of light coating of this medium over the entire surface. It helps the uh, oil paint spread more evenly. And I also, um, I prefer a warm sienna tone to put my paint onto it. Uh, just as a personal preference is that, first of all, I hate to work just on a stark white canvas because the oil paint will leave, leave holes in your painting that the white will show through. <clears throat> and uh, I always prefer a warm surface to paint on because it warms the other colors that I put over the top of it. Anytime that you're painting outside, you're dealing with uh, weather, sunlight, time. Within 90 minutes, you have basically 90 minutes to get down uh, your study because after that, the light will have changed significantly enough that you have a totally different picture that you're working with. If you're painting in town, there's always the, uh, you try to get out of the way, out of, out of the, on a side street where the traffic's not heavy and where you don't have a lot of interruptions. And then there's the elements. Like this morning, it was only about 30 degrees when we first got, came out here. I was pretty sure of that. So there's the cold and summer, there's the heat. It's the bugs, the wind, the rain, <laughs> and just the logistics of setting up. So one of the more important aspects and the reasons to work outside is that it allows the artist to develop a visual memory for color and value and tone. I paint inside more than what I used to, but you still need to get out in the field and work because the human eye sees so much different than the camera and uh, there's also the immediacy of, the, of seeing the scene and working with it. And nothing as compelling as visually as uh, coming out actually seeing the scene and, uh, and the challenge of being able to paint it. Setting up uh, like this is, gives you the best kind of information to go back to the studio and do a finished painting. So when you're back in your studio and you're working and you're looking at uh, reference material, say it's photographs you've taken or drawings that you've done, and the painting isn't working right, uh, this kind of outdoor experience gives you the kind of knowledge you need to go back and make it right. My favorite place is when I first started painting out, outside in location, I had taken a trip to Germany. And uh, anytime that you're painting outside, you attract more of an audience. And uh, to give me courage to get out, because there was always be a crowd watching, is that I, you could buy beer in Germany by the, uh, by the quartz, the, the bottle of beer was the, the kilo thing or whatever it was. I, and, and it was very acceptable to have beer for breakfast in Germany, so I put a couple of those big bottles in my backpack. And, I worked in watercolors mostly then. And so you could sit down almost any street corner and get out your beer, get out your watercolors and uh, do a painting, have a crowd, have a conversation. Uh, the person's reaction to your work is uh, sometimes surprising to me. You know, that they'll get things out of something that I, uh, I necessarily wasn't intending or uh, even thinking about. So I think basically I just, I do my work and then whatever a viewer drags away from it or how they respond to it. And one thing I've learned over the years is that, uh, that you really can't uh, predict it. <laughs> a lot of times paintings that I really like, 80% uh, of people will just, uh, and I'll expect people to respond the same way to something that I really like. And it, it seldom ever happens. <laughs> when I came down here, it was a Sunday morning a few days ago, and I was looking for a location to, for us to paint on, and I was, uh, what captured me, my eye, was uh, 
the light source. It was, we were, I was down here around 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning and uh, it was quiet. And uh, there was just nice contrast between the darks and the light area. And so the, this focal area in here really stood out, just popped. I liked it at, at that morning where the cerulean blue sky was a nice complement off the oranges and the warm tones in here. It all looks good to me right now. I'll put it in my studio for a few days and look at it and uh, maybe some things will come to me that, uh, that I can add or change at the time. But right now it feels good. Being done with something like, and, be, and having the painting being finished, I think are two different things. What I can say for sure right now is I'm about done with this painting. All in all, I think it turned out to be a very nice piece. I think it's kind of captivating. Yes, hi, ladies and gentlemen. That was Gregory Wahomey. Um, he is a museum artist. He's one of the best there is, and I, I hope you take a liking to his work. It's, it's rare to get some, and I have a couple here, and I want to show you one more, and then I'm going to move on to uh, some Peter Max, some Azule, but uh, this one right here is one Gregory Wilhelmy was talking about on the phone. This right here. He said to get those colors right. 2894. And you are looking at. Fire on St. Gregory's Pond. Original oil on canvas. The forest fires burn for five days. On the morning, the flames are slowly dancing in front of the rising sun. Now look at that, Wilson. I want to block out the Peter Max. Look at that. Folks, that is an artist, artist. That uh, Claude Monet, you know, got nothing on him. Look at that. That is how a professional painter, that is as good as you're ever going to get. You know, and if, this is one of Gregory's favorite paintings. And what's, what did I put the retail at this? What did Gregory... 35000 worth every penny of it. You're talking about a man that speaks at museums, taught art. He is just unbelievable. And this is a painting you'll never get tired of looking at. You'll see something different every single time you look at it. And Ashley, after sharpening my pencil, turning on my calculator, what did I find the absolute lowest I could possibly? <coughs> How much? You're killing me. Oh, my goodness. Did you just say, show me again. I got to turn my mic off. This could be a technical mistake. I would say that, Ashley, not in a white right mind. Juliana, did you put something in my Mountain Dew last show for me to say I would open a $35,000 museum piece from Gregory Wilhelmy, not for $20,000, not for fifteen, dollars not for ten. dollars He's doing me a favor by letting me even show this. And Ashley, you're telling me. You can prove I actually said I would open an auction on this for $1,000. Unbelievable. That should have been stopped in its tracks, Wilson. 
I'm going to do it. A thousand to open, two hundred dollar increments. This is one of Gregory's most substantial pieces, and this is why he is a museum artist. This is why he has billion dollar corporate collectors. A thousand dollars to open and pan those reflections, Wilson, caused by the fifth day of wildfires in Montana. Giuliani, did you have anything to do with those wildfires? It's not true you throw light lit cigarettes out the window, is it? Okay. How long ago did you quit smoking? Do you still smoke? You quit? How long ago? A long, long time ago. And that uh, flamethrower you had in the back of your car, what would you do with that? I mean, you could hurt someone with that. Patty, have you seen her flamethrower? It, it was good 25 feet. I mean, that will... It's, it's, a, lot, it's a great, great uh, party to toy at barbecues. Okay. That's amazing. No open on this Gregory Wilhelmy. Well, I am going to move it along. And what I am going to do is tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you one more Gregory Wilhelmy. Right here it's called Wash Day. And he talked about how when the economy turns down and in some of the small towns along the northern plains you see the old fashioned way of cleaning clothes and it says east side of Roundup Montana my hometown everything is falling down in a state of decay but at least the sheets will be clean. He is talking about what happened in the 80s and 90s to towns that had once been thriving and companies leave and everything in that town becomes in a state of disrepair. And you look at something like this and he's showing you the few people that stuck around, a lot of people just left, but the people that stayed around on the east side, I mean, this is their laundry day, wash day. Um, tell you what, uh, make me some offers. I'm just curious if people are watching. That is a beautiful, rich palette. He is showing you the east side of Roundup, Montana after all the big companies left, after all the ideas and the big stores closed. You still got some residents and this is their laundry day. This is an original, one of a kind, Gregory Wilhelmy. I just want to call us up, make me some offers. What does it say the retail is? 8900 That would have been a bargain. He did some shows at my mom's gallery, Editions Limited, in Colorado Institute of Art Galleries, Montana Trails Gallery, Yellowstone Art Museum, the Art Source, Hoff Miller, Denver, and Alina Art Images. He's, I'm just reading a list of some of his collectors, but look at this. This was a show Gregory Wilhelmy added Editions Limited, and oh my goodness, posters all sold out, but this is an original oil painting on canvas.
make me some offers. Tell me what you guys are thinking. Maybe I can find a starting point. No, no, that uh, Confederate notes, they just, uh, they haven't held their value. Oh, they're beating on me tonight. Can you get your son from Emory to come over here and protect me? Yeah, they're beating on me. Tell you what, I got an idea. Something so cheap. This guy is in so many museums. Oh my goodness, the Colorado Institute, everywhere. Tell you what, Ashley. Here's what I'm thinking. Wash day. This is too cheap. This will tell me what I need to know on the internet only portion. I hear a text. What do they say, Ashley? Tell you what. Don't do it, Chapel. Step away from the easel. Oh, this is too cheap. I'll get more trouble than you folks know. Any offers coming in? Because I got an idea. Nobody, Ashley, nobody's texting you. I watched this. So, this is a really important painting. And he's showing you what's happening to once thriving cities that are now kaput in decay. Uh, don't do it, Jeff. I'm going to do it. $500 to open, Ashley. $500 to open. I didn't even say. I can't do that, but I will. $500 to open. $100 increments once we get the open. This is a piece of history. You got a museum artist, Gregory Wilhelmy, painting a scene of the east side of Roundup, Montana, while the whole city is dilapidated and in disrepair. No open yet. Mm. All right. I'm going to show one more, and I'm going to get off of Gregory Wilhelmy. Ashley, I, I got to go to, do we have the open at 500? This is so cheap. We got to go to a place that you, Juliana, hang out at. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna move this back. Okay. I'm not going to show this one yet. I'm going to put this back up. 
Thank you. We have 500. This is so cheap, it's scary. The Gregory Wilhelmi original. We have 500 has been bid looking for six. Wash day. Do you have a wash day at your house, Patty? I do. Do you have a wash day at your place? I don't. I just get, a, I wear all my dirty clothes at once and I jump in the swimming pool with lots of soap. Look how, look how good it did on this suit, Wilson. All right, I didn't do that. We have the open, 500, looking for six, 500, going once. 500, going twice. You guys are killing me tonight. Fair, final warning, all in, all said, sold. All right, Ashley, I am going to hand you this. I got it right here, but I'm not sure I want to sell it. All right. The name of this painting, Wilson, something you know about, something, and I don't mean to rub it in. I'm glad you have gone through the first of nine step program. I'm glad you showed up. I am Wilson. We're all rooting for you. But this is where Wilson went wrong. This is what happened to Wilson, Patty. This is what happens to so many people. The name of the painting is Where Evil Dwells. <coughs> where Evil Dwells. And I'm going to block the, any color feedback from the Beautiful Peter Max we have. Now, what he wrote about this is the spirit of the native son, Evil Knievel, still dwells and defines the tough and rugged mining town of Butte, Montana. He signed it on the front, he signed it on the back where evil dwells, Butte, Montana. Oh, Giuliani shipping, 12,000. No, I'm joking. <laughs> All right, now. This is a museum painting where evil dwells, a very famous bar in Butte, Montana. I don't know if you ever watched the movie Evil Knievel, but uh, he was a strange characteristic character. All right, I'll tell you what I can do. Oh, this is, uh, this is an important painting. I had this up for 2500 didn't get any opens. Here's what I'm going to do. Oh, I can't afford to do this. Gregory's going to be mad at me. Uh, this is amazing painting. And look at all what they wrote on the building. I mean, look at that. Gus Lunch, uh, everything. This is Gregory Wilhelmi painted this in 2013 or 15 signed and dated in the corner right here Wilson oh this is gonna hurt this is a deal I gotta explain this to Gregory somehow I'm gonna blame it on hang on I can I can believe I would let Wilson price it nothing personal Wilson it's just you're in the nine stages of rehab and you're having trouble at one. So I'm going to leave you out of it. All right. 
Giuliani's on the phone, so eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Pick a operator to blame for this price right now. Here we go. What's that? I'm gonna price this so cheap because I had that for 25, 1400 to open. Unbelievable. And I'm sorry, Ashley, but the index finger landed on you. So I'm gonna have to blame you if it sells that cheap. This is a major work by Gregory Wilhelmy. What? Hi, how are they doing? How are they doing? Are they doing okay? How's... Okay, hang on. How is Melanie feeling? How how is how how are they feeling? They're feeling good. All right. Yeah, no, I I I've got to zoom them. I'll pull the Cadillac right up. And and Rick, look, I got to be honest. This Cadillac was in great shape. Ashley drove it into the ravine. Oh, yeah, you have a big generator for it. Yeah. And what did I put this at? Some. I had this at 800 to open? He's offering what? For this? I can't do that, Rick, but I'll tell you what I can do. Hang on, hang on. They are some of my oldest collectors. They. They have been with me. They bought me dinner. They brought me the best prime rib on the planet in Las Vegas. I'll tell you what. All right, well, let me just see. I'll tell you what. Can you ask him? This is an important painting. I just want to show you. Look what he wrote on the back. Can they come up $200 to worth it this is and you see what Gregory Wilhelmy wrote about it right here this is a Gregory Wilhelmy original uh oh is that my me because I've gained weight it takes me longer to get to people's TV sets I've heard that Is it sold? No, oh, oh, he's oh, he, he's. That's what it says on the back. And this is the Cadillac right there. It's beautiful. If I'm not mistaken, this painting was shown uh, at the uh, museum. This was part of his museum show at the Rocky Mountain Museum. Uh, so it's been a museum show. What did they say? Oh, wow. That's great. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Uh-oh, she's smiling at me, Rick. You're giving away secrets. Done. Thank you. All right. Now let me. I only. Uh, oh, where evil dwells. Rick, keep your friends out of this place. No, you don't let Rick go here. This is where evil dwells. This is. I don't even have the item number. Oh, I got it. 
No, it's not. Yeah, that's the right one. I'm not. Did you see what she was telling me, Patty? What? Upside down nine, upside down nine, upside down nine. Yeah, that's what she was saying. Ashley, I don't mean to embarrass you. It's the last thing I would do on a Wednesday night show. But have you ever considered the possibility that you could be possessed? That you could be possessed. Am I possessed? You could be. Are you telling me that? I don't know. I'm just saying. You're not possessed? Well, of course. People that are possessed aren't going to go, Hi, I'm possessed. No. They're not going to tell you they're possessed. They're going to say, Oh, I'm goody two-shoes. And then when they, and Wilson, as soon as they get home, it's like this. Hi, I'm goody two-shoes. Eek! They become the devil, Ashley. The devil. <coughs> I know, it's killing me. Maybe I'm possessed. I don't know. Ah, no. Here you go. Where evil dwells, and he made reference to Butte, Montana's most famous son was Evil Knievel. His real name was Robert Crane Knievel. Uh, and I lowered that down to 1400 Get me close, and that can be yours. Say what? Get gas at Gus's. Get what? Get gas at Gus's. Oh, yes. Get gases at Gus's. Chili sandwich. Beer. Blatt's beer. <laughs> but I love how they, he gets the colors right, the lamp, everything. Usually the best people. Uh oh, is he saying I'm possessed? Is he saying I'm possessed? Really? Does he think I'm possessed? What's that? I'm always possessed. Wilson's always, yeah. Oh my, well, this, don't let, call me up, make me an offer. This is a real winner. This was at several museums, part of his museum show. And I am going to put that back and tell you what. Gregory said that he always thought this was one of his most important pieces, and maybe because of the degree of difficulty in capturing exactly what he saw. He said on the fifth day of fire, the fires in his area of Montana, that he could see, and here's what he wrote, the forest fires burn for five days. On this morning, the flames are slowly dancing in front of the rising sun. So there's the sun, the fires, there's the sun. It is absolutely beautiful. This is, what is the item number on? 2894. This painting means a lot to Gregory. And I, I'd say, hey, I'm here to sell it. You know, but Gregory just wanted everybody to know how much this painting. He said he struggled on this. He used all kinds of overcoats. And when you get it at home, Wilson, can you see how many layers and levels Gregory, especially with the, the gray blues, he just knocked himself out uh, to get the colors identical. And he said, of all the paintings, I spent so much time trying to get the colors perfect on this. And anyway, what do we have this up for? Yeah, a thousand to open. Oh my goodness. 
This is a masterpiece by Gregory Wilhelmy. I hope you're out there tonight. If you can afford to buy one, that is a very rare painting. And Gregory Wilhelmy is, he's, is he 79 or 80? Because I was joking with him. He turned 80, but I said, yeah, Gregory, they tell me the 79 is the new 80. <laughs> You're still young. I hope you give this a lot of consideration. And uh, here is, just to sh give you this, what do you say? It is, it is smoking, Mr. S. This is a picture. I just love this. This is in the commission by Billings, Montana, summer 2002. There, and Gregory's not a little guy. I mean, he's a tall guy, and he's painting this building, what looks like a building. You think of Wiley Coyote and the Road Runner is going to run into that. I mean, it is just what Gregory can do. He is amazing. Somebody's got to want to bid a thousand on fire on St. Gregory's Pond because that is a very, very important piece. And any interest? How much time do I have before I'm on Dish Network? Two minutes? All right. And I might be bringing up, if, 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 if he gets here in time, our temporarily, temporary two-year-old host. Ashley's nephew. Yeah. I don't know, he's a smart kid, Wilson. You know, he told me on the phone when I was talking to him. He said, uh, Barry, thank you for the bobblehead. This is a two year old kid speaking like that. Thank you for the bobblehead, but I got to tell you, I've been thinking about it and I think Einstein is wrong. Uh, yeah. What did Einstein say? E equals MC squared. Says, I got a few problems with it. This kid's only two. All right, yeah, wait till he gets here. No takers on this. Well, I want to thank you for letting me show it to you. And I do have the oldest tree on the North America, but by Gregory Wilhelmy, Bristol Cone Pine. Right there, 5,000 years old. Great Basin National Park, Nevada. The struggle to survive for 5,000 years has created the dramatic, twisted, and tortured beauty of the Bristol Cone Pine. And we'll put that up. Look at that. Gregory will help me. Say what? 2893. Do you believe her, Patty? Okay. We accept that item number. But now, and I don't mean any harm to you, Giuliani, but if you get the item number wrong twice, <laughs> I'm just telling you, you don't get it wrong, but you get it wrong. Hey, look at Wilson. He's, he's up to day one of his nine-day program. It's still going well? Yeah? You've been clean for nine or ten hours now? All right. Hey, you know, when that, when that drug gets a hold of you, we seen Wilson at the, oh, <laughs> what's that? Wrong dish. Wrong dish. Hello, dish. 
My name's Barry Chappell. This is a Wednesday Night Art Show on Primetime Shopping Network. We were talking about Wilson's nine-step program to kick drugs once and for all. <laughs> I hope you do, Wilson. I hope you do. He's on day one of his nine-step program. He's been sober. How long have you been sober now? Eight hours? Seven? Not even seven? Almost six hours. So, Wilson, you hang in there, buddy. So if you see the camera shake, that's not me. <laughs> All right. We were showing a work of Gregory Wilhelmy, a museum artist. And I want to thank everybody because I have some amazing rare Peter Maxes tonight. Got a rare Azule. Got all kinds of stuff. But I am going, we were, they've seen this. I was showing Bristol Cone Pine. Paint in 2002, oldest tree on earth, right here. And he painted this, plain air painted the Great Basin National Park in Nevada. He says, the struggle to survive for 5,000 years has created the dramatic, twisted, and tortured beauty of the Bristol Cone Pine. And I offered to open this at what price, Ashley? $1,000? Ooh, that's cheap. Patty, who gave you all those flowers? They're Kiki. Kiki. Uh -huh. Does she bring them in to give them away, or did somebody give them to Kiki? She brought them in. I'm not going to touch Kiki's flowers. <laughs> All right. I'm moving. You got an offer on this? No. Okay. I want to talk to you about what is happening. In the Peter Max market. Folks, which camera you want me on? This one. I have been on TV for 33. I'm in my 33rd year. In six months, I'll start 34 years on TV. And from time to time, artists, they come, they go. Some get really hot. Uh, Salvador Dali has always been hot. Uh, if you have an authentic one, and we only sell authentic ones. But in the last three years... Four years, what's happening with Peter Max, who is 76, 86 years old. I just want to show you something. Almost every Peter Max title sold out. Peter Max graphics doesn't have them. You know, that's why if you take a cruise 10 years ago, they might have told you it retails for 8000 now they tell you it retails for 48000 because they're gone. And they had a great supply, and they're gone. I have a couple very rare Peter Max here. And what I want to start with is this one. What's that? Yeah, you get it. Just, uh, you have... Coordination and manual dexterity. Now, what I want to show you, some of these comps I've used for years, but some are now obsolete on the low end. And I just, just want to take one second here because Peter Max, this picture of Peter Max was probably taken 15 years ago in his high limit room in Manhattan. The whole reason the Statue of Liberty got reopened was Peter Max called Lee Iacocca and together those two raised $330 million to reopen it. Uh, 
He used to look out his window, his clothes, so he raised the money. He painted that Baldwin piano. This was my favorite work. I had one that looked like this. It's called Angel with Heart. I sold it three and a half, four years ago on TV. Never, ever been able to buy it back anywhere. They're out. All their archive ones gone, they're out. They're done. If you ever want to find one, don't call Max Grab. You've got to find it on the secondary market and the chance of getting it, zero. That's what I found out. Look at this. It said retail 80000 asking price 61000 And I printed that in uh, 20, come on, Chapel, uh, 2012, January of 12 years ago. Wilson is when I printed that. Here is 62,000. Original painting. Uh, neon man in blue. I owned one. Sold it seven or eight years ago. Never been able to get one again. Here is a, paint, a jet that uh, Peter Max painted. Are they, it's on top there, yeah. Now this becomes very important, the next thing I'm gonna show you, because this was on eBay nine years, eight and a half years ago. Acrylic, right here, heart, original. Now, look what I got on the easel. Only place you can find this is on the secondary market. Max Graphics doesn't have any more of this. And I just want to show you. Here is just a serigraph where he made 150 copies and they want 22,500. For man, done in 1979. Here is zero in purple, $80,000. And I printed that nine years ago. Here is, he was official Super Bowl artist, official Grammy artist. Peter Max has done everything. He was born in Berlin, Germany. His father was smart enough to go. It ain't smart being Jewish in Berlin. And they immigrated to Southeast Asia. Look at this right here. This is called flowers. Some people used to sell this called vase or flower vase. This is a very rare Peter Max. It, the cert is signed by Anthony Albert Scaglione, my bad, Park West. <coughs> and in November 29th, 2000, 23 and a half years ago, not last year, Wilson, 23 and a half years ago, this is what Park West and Albert Scaglione appraised this for in June of 2000. We're now in January of 2024. Appraised value 6,200. Park West search signed by Albert Scaglione. So when you start talking about a quarter of a century ago, they valued this at 6,200 in a time where it's getting impossible. Folks, I've done this for a third of a century. I can't get Peter Max. I know enough people after doing this for 33 years to find some. A fair retail price on this right now. I'm going to bring the heart up. Here's the heart for 38,000, but that was nine years ago. There's 75, 80,000 on a cruise ship today. The one that they used to call vase or flower vase. Right here, they want eighty thousand dollars, Wilson. Eighty big ones. 
But I am going to make everybody happy here. Here's what I'm going to do. Oh, this is too cheap. Oh, it's a perfect painting, too. Too cheap, too cheap. Don't do it, Chapel. So, Patty, what do I tell those voices when they come in my head? Go away. Go away. I right, voices, go away. That didn't work, Patty. Oh, I, I need the baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> like, tell you what I'm going to do. This is too cheap. I'll bet we're going to have many bidders, Ashley. $4,500 to open. That's too cheap. Open, yeah, it should be eight, ten, twelve grand. I wanted to see if anybody's watching me, and that price is good for about a minute. Sure. Increment. What? Increment. Uh, two hundred dollars, forty-five hundred to open. Two hundred dollar increments. This is unattainable. I believe this is one of the images that Peter Max Graphics is out of. So, Peter Max is 86. He is pop art in America. He was one of the founding members. I actually hope it doesn't sell because that is too cheap. And if any of you don't believe me, take a cruise. A lot of people call us up later and they say, hey, Barry, you were actually low. You said they want 28,000. They wanted 38,000. So look at that. Acrylic on paper. CERT is signed by Albert Scaglione, president and owner of Park West at Sea. He mixed the colors beautifully on this. You're getting a unique, one-of-a-kind original. Oh, that's too cheap, Petty. I don't know if I should be happy it didn't sell or concerned because it should have sold like that. Hey, I did it, Wilson. Can you snap your fingers, Patty? Wow, what about you? Eh, ah, weak. Yeah, that's good, Patty. What about you, Wilson? Yes, what about you? Ashley, can you snap your fingers? Let's hear them. Okay. I'm going to move this over because that, I am happy, didn't get an open. This is far rarer than I demonstrated. But I am going to show you something so, so very well, rare for Valentine's Day. This is what, for all practical purposes, this might be the last one I ever get a chance to offer. This right here, love. It has the Peter Max six digits registration Love. And what's the name of it? Official name is just... A lot of love. Lot of love. Folks, this is a large, unique, original Peter Max. A lot of love. It's got the six-digit registration number. 
This is an earlier piece, too. Look at that. Mr. Snapdragon. Snapdragon, huh? Well, thank you. Here is a comp from nine years ago. Different type of heart, but look at this. Max Heart Original Acrylic. $38,800. I printed this on August 27, 2015. Eight and a half to almost nine years ago. They are out. Max Graphics are out. The cruise lines will tell you when you take a cruise, they are selling the final pieces of the archive collection. After they're gone, it's only on the secondary market. You can find one. What is the item number on this one? Two, 2900. 2900. It's a large painting, and it is perfect acrylic on paper beautifully framed folks you talk about Valentine's Day this could be the last one available it's because I've been doing this for 33 years I know people and I got one friend that's pretty high up in the Peter Max organization and he fights for me and I'm telling you a play a piece like this, oh my goodness. On a cruise ship, I'm not making this up. On a cruise where every single passenger is sick, Wilson. They've been rough sea and food poisoning. They still tell you they gotta get eighty-five thousand. On a safe, happy you know, sailing through the Greek Isles, they'll tell you why you got to pay them 120000 That this is Peter Max. This is a unique original. And it is absolutely stunning. Now, I got a price in mind. But it is getting, and let me go to camera two. It is getting impossible to get Peter Max's, period. I mean, you know, the other day, well, a month or two ago, we sold a Banksy, a signed one. And I mean, I can't even touch them now. I mean, they're a billion dollars with a capital G. Gee. I mean, so they are out. Peter Mark Max graphics are out. The only place to find these usually is a secondary market, but Peter Max Graphics are selling the final few archive pieces they put away. And so you want a really rare one. I showed you a comp for $38,000 from 15 years ago or 12 years ago. Now you can't touch them. Take a cruise, they want hundred grand. But I got a price in mind. Oh. Oof. I want to give the absolute best price on TV. That's how I've stayed on TV for 33 years. But I know I'm never going to see another one of these again. And that is just a perfect max. Oh, I got a price. Oh my gosh, they want 120,000, Patty. They get you liquored up on the cruise, too. Tell you what, this is too cheap, too cheap, too cheap. 7,200 to open. $200 increments once we get the open. You could be looking at the last available Peter Max Hart. I mean, they are down to the archives, and we have this one here. Mm 
looking. I don't know if Peter Max, what year did the rock band Heart? Because Peter Max got really famous in the late uh, final couple years of the 60s when he was doing neon uh, works that you put under a black light. He was probably doing it during 1973. Yeah, I mean, he was big and... Once again, he raised, with Lee Iacocca, $330 million to reopen the Statue of Liberty. In 1981 or 82, it reopened. Ronald Reagan was there, Lee Iacocca. Yeah, because somebody, I, I wish, there used to be a day I could get quite a few Peter Max because I know what I'm doing and I pay people on time I buy them up front. I make big deals. Doesn't matter. There aren't any more. Peter Max graphics, they're out. O-U-T. And that's why it's amazing I have three Peter Max here tonight. And here's what I am going to do. Which one are they interested in? All right, let me get right here. Okay. That's not going to work, Chapel. This will work. Stay and stay. Now this one right here. Oh, it's a free-for-all trying to buy a Peter Max. It really is, you know. And I've been very fortunate at times. And this, to me, is one of the prettiest Peter Maxes I've ever come across. This image right here. This is BC2901. Look at this. Apparently, the frame is made in Italy. You ever been to Italy? All right. This is huge. BC 2901. And... Peace 2000. It is a unique original. Now, folks, I always thought this is one of the prettiest uh, originals by Peter Max, and it is absolutely stunning. They won $120,000 on cruise for this. A lot of Peter Max are sold on cruises. There are galleries in New York, the Peter Max Gallery and places like that. But this is unbelievable. It's the last one I got. And it is stunning. Look at those eyes, Wilson. Look at that lady's eyes. This is the registration number. Oh, wow. Six digit, but really low. I Love the World is the title, and unbelievable. Folks, Peter Max like these are unavailable now. Yeah, they won $120,000 on cruise ships for this, Matt. I've seen them. I've been there. I used to have friends that auctioned things on cruise ships. Tell you what I'm going to do. Retail is a hundred and twenty thousand.
I am going to, oh man, this hurts. Actually, I could never get another one of these. I mean, this is it. This is one of Peter Max's most famous images, and he did not spare the acrylic on this one. Those sky blues next to the magenta red, how he mixed the purple and the pink. Oh, that's stunning. One of the most colorful ones. Look at the portfolio of the profile of that, that girl's face right there. 8,200 to open. But I'll work with you, but 8,200, $200 increments. I want to make them happy. Is it happy? But does she realize that these are gone, gone, gone? I mean, they are dealing with their archives. Here's what I can do for her. Bottom, what's that? Oh, she knows. What state does she live in? Mississippi. It's one of the few states I can spell because they. Drill it in your head, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. -S 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 That's the only state where I can spell Utah. But anyway, I can spell Indiana too. But anyway, here's what I can do. For her, I'm going to turn my mic off. Because if the rest of the free world heard this price, they would be a run on this studio. Huge. It is perfect, and this could be the very last one owned by Peter Max Galleries. Important piece. I love the world. It's huge. Look at the size of this. But I'll tell you what. What's that? Oh. Hey, uh, tell that nice lady. Let me go to camera two for a second. J? Miss J. Miss J. Camera two, Miss J. I'm fighting for you, but I got one problem. You know what that is? I'm surrounded by assassins all around me. I'm going to make this happen for Miss J, but I'm coming over there. Go back to the painting. I got to crawl over to, I'm going to dodge some bullets here. All right. Bottom. I mean, this is the last one. It is perfect. I handpicked it out. I, you know, they, they're all sold. What's the... Take that offer. I can't take it. I thank you, Miss J. I can't. Hey, I'll tell you what. Patty, Patty, and I know it's, I know, and I want her to own this painting. If she can come up, giving it away. I, I have done an awful job explaining the market conditions right now for Peter Max. They aren't any, and they are going for huge amounts of money. I want her to get this piece. Whoa. And you guys, I hope you're having a great time out there. I could show you more pictures of pretty boy Floyd, but I don't want to overdo it. I'm going to bring the dog.
I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. If she can come up to it all over in the future, Patty, tell her she can come up to what I need. Uh, I'll owe her in the future. I'll get her something in the future. It's gorgeous. It's huge, too. It's a unique original by Peter Max. And there aren't any more. That's the problem. If there were, I've had the best price on TV for 30 plus years. Stress on anybody. I really don't. I bet I, but look how big this painting is. I'm not a little guy. This is perfect coloring, too. Right in here, it's just stunning. And I want to thank everybody for watching and And I thank her for thinking about it. And Patty, tell her when Floyd sold. sold. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I know everybody's sacrificing, and I'll tell you, we... We really, I, you got a great deal. And chances are you're not going to see another one. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, all right. Take a look at this. All right, I'm going to show you. I only have two Peter Maxes left. Everybody, Wilson, this is getting to be. Now, Wilson, let me ask you this. Besides being a cameraman, okay, is, is cameraman a stressful job? No? <laughs> well, thank you, Mrs. J. Thank you. That is done. I have these two maxes left. Now, and I thank everybody. And I got to tell you, it's going to be a long time to get these maxes tonight. I had to call in a lot of favors. Here is a comp from nine years ago on eBay. A, a, acrylic painting right here. 38,000, nine years ago. 
They had more of them. Now they don't. This right here is BC 2900. And this is one of the toughest ones to get. The first Peter Max I ever owned and framed in my house, I did 20 years ago. Let's see, my son is 26, my daughter's 22, so it would have been 2002, uh, 2024 minus two, 22 years ago, I had one in my house when my daughter was zero to one and my son was four. I had a different heart. It was smaller, and it, they, they, they always remembered it. This right here, and I got to walk over there. What are the dimensions on this? I should have brought my glass. That is a 46 by 34. 46 by 34. It wants to retail. What do I have up there? 85. Yeah. This, you look at how much yellow. Red, purples, oranges, blues, everything that uh, Peter Max put on this painting. And this painting was probably done, if I had to guess, 2005, four or five, just a guess. It's got a very low registration number, 2503700. If you go to Peter Max Graphics and enter your registration number, you'll see a picture of Peter Max signing his name to the pieces. Call me up. This could be the last heart. These look so good in a house. They, you just hang one of these, it brings joy. It really does. I had one, and my kids would walk past it. Family would. Dog would. I had a happy dog, Wilson. Did you ever have a happy dog? Oh, really? Because what they told me about you, oh, my, my bad. Did you really give your dog a mohawk? I've seen dogs in Santa Monica with mohawks. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But little Floyd is turning out okay. You know, it's funny because I had a dog that I found when I was working on my master's degree in Reno, Nevada. There's pretty boy Floyd next to Ginger right there. See little pretty boy here? Look at that. Well, it is a, uh, that's a hound dog next to, and I forgot the name. Uh, look at pretty boy Floyd. And this, this dog will just jump on me. The people at Petco shave my dog. I've been feeding it many tablets of Rogaine and the hair is growing back. I didn't give my dog Rogaine. So, yeah, happy pretty boy Floyd. But I was uh, talking about this painting right here. They are, they are out of them. I had a heart, a little different than this, 20 years ago in my house. And it makes a difference knowing that we are dealing with the final archival collection of Peter Max graphics in New York, the same Peter Max that with Lee Iacocca's help raised over $330 million to reopen the Statue of Liberty in the late 70s because we was depressed it was closed. His office looks right at it and it was closed and that bothered him and he raised the money, helped raise it to reopen it. Nancy Reagan even invited him to the White House in 1981 and they painted Statue of Liberties on paper uh, on the White House yard. A uh, lot of love. Tell you what, I'm giving the best 
feels I possibly can and take a look at this right here. Oh, I want to make somebody happy. Look, there is a better than 80% chance I will never get another Peter Max heart. I had to use all my connections, 33 years on TV. This is what he is famous for. And let me just see. My dog sleeps on satin sheet? No, he doesn't. <laughs> this is my dog on my comforter. That is my bed. That's what I sleep on. Oh, my goodness. And Ginger, she's doing better, but uh, on the left side of Ginger, uh, look, he just, this dog just climbs up. Once I have to help him up, but then he just walks all over me. He never stays in one place more than 20 minutes. Then I'll come walk around and flop over here. But with Ginger, oh, look at that. That's pretty boy Floyd, attacked by a coyote. Coyote broke five of his ribs. Cast came off. There he is, but uh, Ginger on her left side, it's taken, it's almost all off. She had a big patch of nicotine gum stuck to her. Oh, it's hard to get the nicotine gum off. Yeah. But I got it off. Hey, I'm telling you, you ever try nicotine gum, Wilson? I, and look, I don't want to get, Wilson, I don't want people getting hard on me, but if, if you ever see your dog light up in a bed, you better give him nicotine gum. Ginger could have burned the whole house down, and I just won't have that. Does your dog ever smoke, Patty? No. Okay. Yeah, it's a bad habit. All right. All right. It was my nicotine gum. Folks, I want to give this a lot of thought. And I thank everybody that's buying tonight. I'm going to show you one that I probably did a bad job explaining because I priced it so cheap. Is one other Peter Max. And I'm going to, I got an. A rare azure. All right. Stay, Max. Right here. I always, and this is what the back says, signed by Albert Scaglione, director, Park West Galleries, Park West, but on November 29th, 2000, 23 years and a couple months ago, they appraised this for 6,000. Where did they? Where's the? Uh, 6,200. This, and I don't want to argue with Park West and Albert Scaglione. I, of course, where did her painting go? Um, you know, I always learned that this, the, the, they called it flowers. I learned this was vase. Uh, here, yeah, right here is the Peter Max registration number, Peter Max low, low registration number. I love the world. Yeah, takes a second, but it says, I love the world. And there's your six digit Peter Max number. Did you see the Peter Max? Because that's the one she can. That was a heck of a deal she got, too. Tell her not to let that painting go too cheap. So, this right here. Oh, she is more than welcome. 
Now, you see this painting right here. 2902. To what now? 2902. 2902. I always learned this was named Vase, but they call it Flowers. This is a rare image. I have not had a vase, one like this, in two and a half years. They are always sold out. And 23 years and, and three months ago, Park West valued this at appraised value at 6200 Folks, it's now eighty-five to ninety-five thousand, at least seventy-five thousand. This is only available, I am believe, on the secondary market. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Ashley, what do you quote this at? Because I don't want to get anybody mad at me. Yeah. All right. I am going to honor that price. I hope you're out there. And which customer were you telling about this? Because I can't get another one of these. Mr. L. Mr. L. I lowered this all the way down to, what did I start this at? No, I didn't. Did I say 4,500, Wilson? Good answer. He's standing there like uh, Hogan's Heroes. I see nothing. At 4,500, you're killing me. This should have been 7,600. I made a mistake. It is a very rare one. I always called this vase or flower vase, but it's called flowers. You got a signature of uh, Albert Scaglione the uh, director of Park West at 4,500. I'll bet this is going to go. But I could be wrong. I don't have silk sheets. I would not, not know what to do with them. You know what I do on wash day at my house? Paper towel sheets. <laughs> yeah, they'll not keep you warm. Wrap yourself up in bounty paper towels. Yeah. They do absorb it, yeah. <laughs> no, I do not need them to absorb anything. <laughs> All right, no interest in this. Um, what I want to do now is... I have an Azule, yes. and I am going to this is an amazing Azule. Two nine zero three. Now, this is, you can see this embossing line here. That's where they did an etching first. You put so much pressure on the paper because you have a copper plate that has ink in it, but the copper plate gives you the outline. And then the, because it's Barvarian limestone or copper, that color gets absorbed into the paper. So Guillaume Agile first did an etching, then he hand lays the gold. Then Guillaume Agile, the youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the permanent archival collection of the Louvre, the Bibliothèque Nationale, hand watercolored this piece. Uh, and it means what, are, what does this mean in French? What did it mean? The, the freedom? The, the what? The outside. The outsider that they get out of this square. He is hand watercolor, the youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. He hand signed it, Guillaume Agile. 
he wrote the name in French, 2012, then as a study in colors, one of one. That's for all practical purposes, an original Azule. You're talking, let's see if I got it. I don't have a retail up there because this is, this is as good as it gets from Guillaume. Tell you what, oh, a one of one, all that work by Guillaume for one piece, Wilson. He etched a copper plate for one piece. I got to say retail, 14500 minimum. But I'm not going to charge you that. I'm going to give somebody a deal of a lifetime. Please don't be shy. This is one of those deals I'm hoping I get four or five or six bidders. But I'll tell you what. Oh, this is rare. This is too cheap. $900 to open. $100 increments once we get the open. You're getting an original Azulay. First he etched it, then he hand laid the gold, and then he hand watercolored those horses that they're saying, please let us outside of this box. Oh, that's beautiful. A one of one. All that work, he didn't turn into an addition. That's rare. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, you frame that up right, I'm looking at it, because you have tangerine hair on a, uh, on a green horse. A purple horse with a purple background and a blue mane and then a yellow gold horse with a red mane. I don't know what color you would frame that in. Uh, anything would look. Black would look great. Bright shade of silver would look good. Hey, take it easy. Hey, good luck, Jay. He's on his way to try and meet with Kim Jong-un of North Korea. Hey, Jay, what's your last name? <laughs> hey, I'm not the one that said I could meet with Kim Jong-un. Do you think he's really going to believe that he represents Shaquille O'Neal? Kim Jong-un, no. I don't know. I've never tried to go to North Korea or South Korea. I want to get to South Korea. All right. No interest in this. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. And, folks, I'm going to put this up here. And what I want to do real fast... I started by playing uh, Gregory Wilhelmy Part 2. I want to play Gregory Wilhelmy Part 1, and I got some more art I want to show you. So sit back. We got another hour and five minutes. And if you're ready, take a look at... I'm ready. <laughs> Tell me when he's ready. Because I can't go any faster. Now. 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 Doesn't work. Take a look at this. Okay. 
I spent a lot of my life uh, judging my uh, success or failure by how impressed other people were with my work. And uh, I know that in the latter part of my life now, I just, I'm trying to impress myself. And uh, I get there every once in a while. Uh, I'll get something that I think is special. And uh, you realize that uh, it's not so, so important what other people think. The saying says you spent the first 20 years of your life worrying about what other people think of you. And you spend the next uh, 20 years of your life not worrying about what other people think about you. And then the next 20 years of your life, you realize that nobody was thinking of you anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Look at that beautiful knot that I have there. I think my heart basically is still in the West, and with that, uh, the, uh, the, the growth of the West, the death of the West, the scenery of the West. But um, in general, just uh, I find things of visual interest in a, a lot of different places. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to make a living at this way of life uh, for many years, in spite of what my parents told me. They were only half true. <laughs> they were only half right. So, so that's, that's what I do. I'm an artist, a painter. That's all I can remember that I ever wanted to, to do or to be or seriously considered. I started drawing early on. I drew on everything I could. And, uh, we, had, uh, we didn't have any art classes or art lessons or anything. It's just something that I thought I was supposed to be and do. And I tell the story of my folks owned a dance hall in a bar in a, in a little town around up, and I tell the story about my father hiring this itinerant artist to, that came through, he hired him to paint some murals, and I was about six or seven years old, and um, I remember sitting in that dance hall and watching him paint these murals of the mountains and the streams and the deer and the elk and the cabins, and, uh, and they were, you know, I don't know how hokey they really were, but uh, I was just fascinated by, by this man and what he could do. And uh, uh, my father worked in construction, and, uh, my, and, and they wanted to be supportive of what I was going to be, but it just wasn't in their vocabulary. They just didn't quite understand. And when I look back on it, I, you know, I, I understand now why they, you know, they tried to <laughs> steer me in a different direction, but it didn't work. Yeah, so when I got out of high school, I, started studying art in whatever colleges I went to. I finally graduated from the University of Denver. When I went to college, the art movement in the 60s in the university system was almost 100% devoted to uh, the abstract movements in contemporary art. And for a person who just wanted to go out and learn how to paint or draw something, it was, it was fairly limited. And uh, I took as much life drawing and drawing classes, or as many drawing classes as I could, and, uh, the, um, and I got a degree in fine arts, but I felt woefully uneducated in as far as like knowing how to paint and do the things that I, that I wanted to do, and, uh, which is some form of representational art. Where I really learned was at the expense of my students at the uh, Colorado Art Institute. I taught life drawing and design and color theory and I found that I really had to delve into the subject myself and to learn it because these were sharp students and they wanted to know. And so it's been a process. And I tried the commercial art field for a while and uh, that just didn't do it. I've been fortunate enough that I do paintings that I want to do. I very seldom take on any commission work anymore. Most of my sales come from work that I've done that, uh, that uh, somebody sees and wants. And that's where I've been fortunate. It's more, I basically paint the things that I want to paint. Whenever I'm asked from other artists or younger people who are trying to make a living at this, and they say, what's the, uh, you know, what do you do to make this happen? And I, my answer is just be persistent, you know, never give up. Just do what you love and uh, keep doing it. And you'll either make a living at it or you'll starve with it or you might do both of it, but it's what, you're, it's what you're supposed to do. 
And I think that has to be true with any art form you're going into. If you're an actor, a dancer, singer, writer, whatever, you know, that uh, rejection is just a big, heavy word. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's so, so it's rejection. So, but uh, I think learning that failure isn't, there's no such thing as failure. You know, it's just a, it's a starting point. There's always a starting point. I liked this uh, contemporary realism as a theme, but then uh, it has a, a more of an impressionistic bent to it as far as the way it's portrayed. So my, my themes are contemporary, my, uh, my approach is uh, more impressionistic. And some paintings are very hard for me to part with, that uh, you know, to put them on the market and sell them. So I'd like to keep some of them. And I, every once in a while I find one, I, I squirrel it away and keep it. Uh, that'll be reminiscent of something that was near and dear to me that I had some deep feelings for. And I have the, you know, the next 40 or 50 paintings I'm going to do, I already know what they are. And I'll never get to them. For if I get to them, there's gonna, I hope there's another 40 or 50 out there. So, uh, and that gets easier as I get older. I think for some, you know, that creativity and youth are, are kind of tied together. And I think that's true, but there's a kind of creativity as you get older, that's uh, easier. It's not as desperate. You've failed at so many th things already that uh, you can kind of just enjoy the pace that you're at. You know that there's a peacefulness that comes with it, and a sh you know that uh, the fear passes to some degree, and uh, you can uh, see things, or at least for me, and see things a little more clearly. Than... I've been fortunate enough that I do paintings that I want to do, and uh, sometimes that leaves off part of the commercial market. Um, things that are, are, are obviously have beauty to them or sentimentality are unfortunately easier to, to sell at times, and, uh, but not, not always. Uh, so I think that one of the great part about being an artist is that uh, you're try it, it gives you a chance to continue to grow the rest of your life until Alzheimer's sets in or the, you get blind like the old dog. Um, but, you, you know, there's that, that's, that's the real beauty of this kind of life, is that there's a growth potential there that you may, you probably will never get there, but the dream is always out in front of you. folks, Barry Chapel back with you. We're going to get to Elephant Family by Steve Kaufman in a minute, but after showing you that on Gregory Wilhelmy, I really want to stress this painting right here where evil dwells and what Gregory Wilhelmy wrote about this painting is where evil dwells, the spirit of of the native son, Evil Knievel, still dwells in, uh, uh, in and defies the tough and rugged mining town of Butte, Montana. And he signed his name on the painting, then he wrote this history about it. This, I think, hung at a museum in Butte or Billings, Montana. And I want to show you this because Gregory Wilhelmy is a museum artist. Look at all the people that come. This was his long road paintings from the Northern Plains. Look at how many people just come to listen to talk after talk by Gregory Wilhelmy. I mean, this guy is important. And He's 80 years old, and he said this was one of his favorite paintings. And I'm trying to remember. It was like a $35,000 Wilhelmy. And tell you what, I want to make this someone a great home 
Tell you what, I can't believe I'm doing this this cheap. $1,200 to open. And this is one of his favorite paintings. I mean, you can look into every window there, you know, whether the curtains are blowing in the breeze, what's going on, it's just amazing. And uh, this hung at the Butte, Montana, or I'm sorry, uh, one of the major galleries in Montana in one of his shows. And to get this at 1200 to open, that's crazy. Look at that, where evil dwells. All right. Give that a lot of thought. Now, behind me is a Steve Kaufman. Elephant family. Steve Kaufman is a very was a very famous pop artist. He gave to over 70 charities. Uh, there's a picture of Steve Kaufman standing next to Bruce Willis. I printed this in 2010. Unfortunately, Steve Kaufman died in 2010. Um, and he what Steve Kaufman did is he put his money where his mouth was. He hired gang kids that, that reformed, that turned the leaf to help him do silk screening and work in his studio. He also knew, you know, did work. Look at that. There's one of the BB Kings. I mean, this is BB King right there. And that's 2010 comp. Here's a 2015 comp for a Marilyn Monroe. $12,475. Spider-Man Juggernaut. Signed by Stan Lee. Four hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars, Wilson. Can they see that? Look at that. Folks, this is called Elephant Family. This is exactly how every Steve Kaufman looks like. When I hold it up, you're going to see right there S-A-K, that's how we signed it, number two of 25, Artist Proof. Number two of 25 in the Artist Proofs. I mean, with Steve Kaufman dead, look at the coloring. This is like $38,000, $40,000, he died. 14 years ago. And we'll put this up. Uh, what's the item number on Steve Kaufman? 2904. Look at that. This is one of the cool ones. He did a lot of, I sold a lot of Barbie uh, that he did, or the Rat Pack. I sold quite a few scar faces, which are now 12,500 wholesale. Uh, he is, and what I liked about him is he spent so much of his time giving uh, away. He uh, did something with Marvel Comics, with Mickey Mantle. He did Muhammad Ali. He did so many. And he would always hire gang kids. 
He did the Holocaust uh, Memorial. I mean, Steve Kaufman was, is, is, it was like he was on the border, helped start 70 charities, and he just always giving. Um, and here's one painting for B.B. King benefit birthday event. Tell you what I can do on this. This is tough. Yeah, retail's got to be. I'm going to be conservative. 22,000. I haven't seen an elephant family. It's number two and 25 artist proof. I hope you're out there. This this is this is too cheap. Oh, can you imagine? This is a large painting. If someone wants to frame it up, I uh, take it to the best framer near you because I don't know if I can ship one that big. But uh, oh, this is what's the size of this, Patty? Thirty-five by thirty-five. Thirty-five by thirty-five. Yeah. Elephant family, oh, tell you what, I'm going to give you guys, this is an early Christmas gift for next year. This is too cheap. $1,250 to open. $100 increments once we get the open. Signed and numbered by S Steve Kaufman right here elephant family done the year he died he died in 2010 look at that That frame out beautifully. Now what I want to do, folks, here's what I'm going to try and do. And I've been making too much fun of Wilson and uh-oh. Did I make that light go off? I don't know if I did. Here. Right here. Is Peter Max Hart. Right here. Folks, I will always entertain offers, reasonable offers. I have this, which once again, I apologize. I think Mr. L was thinking about it. This is very rare. I do not want to argue with the people at Park West. And Albert Scaglione, but I believe the name of this is Vase, Flower Vase. But whatever, this has always been a rare piece. And I think we were coming close. So I want you guys to give me a call. I do want you to really understand that it is almost let me go to camera too i can't get Peter Max. yeah let me go on i can't right three years they're gone they're like all from peter max archives that's why Oh, can they hear me now? 
Yeah. Um, Peter Max's are almost impossible. Peter Max is 86 years old. Uh, and if you take a cruise, pieces that 10, 15 years ago, they might have opened for 12 or 20,000 now or 80 because they're out. They're all gone. Peter Max is one of the most success successful pop artists of all times. And his work to reopen the Statue of Liberty and everything to be Jewish, born in Berlin, Germany, and to have a father and mother with a good sense. In 19, he was born in 1937 and 1944, or 1939, I'm sorry, they got out of Germany and moved to Southeast Asia. So folks, I want you to take a look. There are two of the most amazing Peter Maxes. I gotta tell you, I cannot get any more. The people I buy from say, Barry, stop calling. We don't have any. We're not gonna get any. I work with one of the largest Max guys on the West Coast. They can't even get them. Nobody can. And uh, that one right there, the flower vase with flowers. Call me. Mr. L, this might be your last chance to ever get that. I know you were thinking about it. I want to make some deals. That, look at that. That is stunning. 22 years ago, they valued this at 6200 Lots happened to Peter Max graphics in 22 years. Their Audi is one of the world's greatest pop artists. And call me. I had this so cheap to open. Right above that painting is the heart. A lot of love. And that is a beauty. Like I said, I had one when my kids were growing up. They love it. They got mad at me when I sold it like 10 years ago. They go, Dad, why do you sell it? Well, I, I'm in the art business on TV. I, yeah, but anyway, uh, what did I put the heart up at, Ashley? The what? The heart, a lot of love. Emotional? Yeah, what, yeah, what did I put it up for? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, did I lower it that much? I had a 7,200 to open, but call me. I'll sharpen my pencil, turn on my calculator. I have a Steve Kaufman elephant family. Got a couple Gregory Wilhelmies, but... Oops. Camera two for a second. It is almost impossible. You are watching the last few shows that I'll most likely have Peter Max on. And that's only because I got a friend that's way up in the Max organization. They're gone. The archives are gone. The ones that they put in national auctions are going for billions of dollars. I've watched some of them, I'm going, you've got to be kidding me. You know, three times what uh, I had to retail at. So if you want a Peter Max, tonight's your night. I got these two, and they're very rare. Heart, a lot of love is the name of that one. It's a large Peter Max acrylic on paper. And the one below it, I always knew that as flower vase. I remember in 2005, I had one of those. And I sold that on Art Garabedian's network. It was called DSN. 
Uh, Art Garabedian, unfortunately, COVID got him. He was a great guy. And uh, so right here, I mean, I, I lowered this and lowered this. Mr. L, I lowered it down to 4,500. Call me. Get me close. I'll make something happen. But I only have about 35 minutes left in my show. 40, my bad. Let me know what you're thinking. Got a couple other Gregory Wilhelmies. That is stunning, Wilson. Can you pan every inch of that vase and flower? Because Peter Max did something special to that. And I think this is literally, this piece you're looking at is old enough to vote. I mean, this is stunning. That's a uni unique original. Acrylic on paper. That's one of the prettiest flower pieces I've ever seen. Mr. L, if you're out there, let me know. I have a couple other Well, Helmies. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's go with the heart piece. A lot of love. I can't say it, Wilson. I can't say in the name of this painting, Patty. It's a lot of love. It's a lot of love. Look at that. A lot of love. If you want a special off-air price, I got up at 7200 Call me. But I need you to know this is probably one of the last hearts you're going to see by Peter Max. If I'm not mistaken, this piece was done. I'm only guessing from the registration number. I'm going to say 2005. This is stunning. It's vivid. Call for an off the air price. And nobody wants. I'm going to show this one more time. Right here. I'm going to take the elephant family down, Ashley. It's scaring me. It's a stampede. It's a stampede. Have you ever been caught in a stampede? No. I haven't either. I've had a dream that I was before. You did what? You caused one? No, I've dreamt. You dreamt that you were in a stampede? Yeah, like in Jumanji. Tamachi? Jumanji, the movie. Oh, Jumanji. Oh, I right, call me up. Make me some offers. Anybody out there? Because I'm going to move. I'll tell you what I'm going to do.
Painting comes with a lot of love. Can you hug it? <laughs> I just did. All right. Now, I have sold Guillaume Agelet's work for over 20 years. This is one of the rarest pieces I've had. This is a one of one done in 2012. A, say, a study of the colors, one of one. And what is that transfer to? Breaking out of the square, outsiders. The outsider, right? Yeah. The outside. The outside. These horses are getting outside. I mean, this is a really rare piece. I did an awful job explaining it. Um, look at that. First, he etches it. Then he hand lays the gold. Then he hand watercolored it. The youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the permanent archival collection of the Louvre. That's one heck of an one heck of a record there. My glasses. What do I have the retail up for the list? Fourteen five. Fourteen thousand five hundred. Watch this. Oh, folks. I got a secret off the air price. I can't say it on the air. I'll be whipped. Hey, when they lock you away. Now nah, I can't talk about you. Yeah, never mind. Um, I got a secret off the air price. All you got to do is call. Guillaume Agelet has hand watercolored those horses. He hand laid the gold. You can see from the heavy embossing marks around the square that this started out as a copper plate etching. I got a very, very special price. got a, such a special price. I want to yell it out, but I can't, Patty. I want to yell out the special price. Don't do it. Patty's going, don't do it, Perry. Loose lips sink ships. I can't because loose lips sink ships. Have they ever proved that? Loose lips sink ships. What ship got sunk by somebody with loose lips? I can't talk about it. You can't talk about it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I got a price that is mind-numbingly low. I'm going to tell Patty, but don't freak out. Okay. I got to turn my mic off to tell you. Yes! You turn off your mic, right? I turned off my mic. Right. And as Mr. L called back about the flower vase. Okay, well. I got, I hear a text. What's All right, no takers on this. All right, now let me talk to you.
about the last heart that I'm ever probably going to get my... I, you never say never. I can't believe the Steve Kaufman elephant families. No, Patty, I can't sell the baby elephant without its mother. That'd be mean. You wouldn't want that, would you? No. I know you. I'm looking at Giuliani. She's going, why not? <laughs> okay. Now, I have done an awful job explaining to everybody tonight that it's almost impossible to get Peter Maxis. It's changed so much in the last six months, especially the last two months. Can't get them. I've been doing this for a third of a century. This one right here. Love. Lot of love. BC 2900. They want 85,000, 90,000 on cruise ships. You don't believe me till you take a cruise and you go, wow, he wasn't kidding. We've had dozens or almost a dozen callers calling up and say, hey, we took a cruise and you were low, Barry. They wanted so much more than you said they'd want. So I need to sell lot of love, Wilson. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to sit down here. Wilson, I'm sitting down here. You think I should dye my hair back to black? No, no. No, no? You like me white? I've known you dark. But yeah. You've known me dark and you like me white. <laughs> so you're saying to me, you like my white gray hair better than my dyed black hair. That is correct. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm here tonight to sell a lot of love. The painting right behind me. Now, I've had this up. I've been calculating the price. Here, let me move out of the way, Wilson. This is a large Peter Max original. It's Acrylic on paper. My guess from the sir, the Peter Max registration number, it's only a guess. I'd say it's 2005. It's early, and I just, when you take a cruise, they're going to want 85000 or more. I'm not going to charge anywhere near that, but I got a price that I don't think I can't even mention it on TV, it's so low. Get, get a lot of people in trouble. If you call me, I got a price, you're gonna go, that's unbelievable. That is one of the most beautiful Peter Max hearts I've seen, and it's almost impossible to get one. So I have a price in mind, and people are texting, and I am just, ah. I gotta get over here and get a piece of nicotine gum. I gotta chew it here because Ginger will take it and chew it, you know, and it's just. Uh, red hair, absolutely. Red hair. So he wants me to become the redheaded stepchild, huh? No, I, I don't know. Red hair? I don't know. I'm just lucky I still got some. <laughs> um, I got a price in mind. Ashley. Yes, I got a price. This is so cheap. It will never remain at this price. All right, I'm running out of time, but this, if you want, and that is one of the most vivid, vivacious 
Peter Max, I've seen, look at it, it just radiates. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. cheap give me a call you're not going to see it next week or well you might but I doubt it I mean a lot of people tape the shows I got a world it's not 9500 9, it's not the 110 or 85 they want on cruise ships it's not 20,000 it's not 19, 18, 17,000 that is a unique, original acrylic on paper done by Peter Max. My guess is 2005, 4, 2, something like that. It's absolutely bold. And I'll tell you what, it's not 15,000. It's not 14,000. Go to Park West Cruise offering 14,000. They're either going to laugh at you or throw you off the boat. I'm going to go, yeah, that's per month right now. It's not going to be 13000 It's not going to be 12000 This might be your last shot at a gorgeous Peter Max heart. The way you use that blue, the greens, the magenta reds. Oh, this painting comes together. It's not even $10,000. Hey, I don't want to scare any of you. Ashley's drinking something out of a jug. Is that what I think it is? All right. You think it's water? It's not even $9,000. Folks, if you can afford it, you're looking at possibly the last Peter Max art I ever get. 33 years been on TV. They're all gone. Mr. S wants to give me a fluorescent red wig. Oh my goodness, eh, I might not, nah, I don't know. All right, we're talking cheap on this. Last call on the Peter Maxes. And, you know, camera two, there is uh, a lot of places. What? He wants me to just say the price. How many people have asked for me just to say the price? Just one, right? This is rock bottom. No negotiation. No negotiation. Uh, I'll tell you what, this hurts. Wilson, I am making, if I sell it for this, such razor thin profit, if any, because we got the crew, we got everything. I hope you're out there. This is bottom, bottom, bottom. Never going to see it again. That is a huge Peter Max. $6,300. I'd be all over that, folks. Take a look at that. That is huge. That is perfect. He used the most amazing colors. And Peter Max is 86. 50 years from now, Peter Max will be known. 150 years he'll be known, just like Jean-Claude Navarro, first man to make glass glow at night. He'll be remembered a 1,000 years from now. Guillaume Agile, youngest living artist to ever be accepted into the Bibliothèque Nationale, the Louvre. He'll be remembered. 
you are looking at an amazing Peter Max. And I'm telling you, I can't get any more. If you don't believe me, take a cruise. They'll have fewer of them and they'll want twice as much, my guess. And all right. I got one special price on this one right here. Look at that letter from Albert Scaglione on the back. Park West. Look at that. He did an appraisal 22 years ago at 6,822 years ago. This was most almost certainly the last one. Uh, it's called Flowers or something like that. I thought it was called Flower Vase. This is a rare bird. deal. Wilson, you're a brave man. Have you ever jumped off of this podium? You have? More than once? Did you land correctly? You think I would land correctly? There's no way. I'd trip over that extension cord. No, I... You know, it's funny, I can sell things on TV, but manual dexterity has never been way up there for me. Oh, I got to stand up straight. I got to get rid of that gray hair. I think I should just shave my head. No, just do the, the gray for men. The gray for men. Just put a little yeah. black or red orange, like Mr. S suggested. Well, folks, give us some calls. I am making deals, and I wish I had more of these. The Steve Kaufman is still available. I mean, call me up. I'm, I, I, you might not believe me, but I, I, I kid you not, I am not going to have many more Peter Maxes. They have become, they're gone. The ones that they have are saved for the cruise lines, and those are three times what they used to be a few years ago. I'd be all over that uh, heart. That is what he is so known for that. They all, they're both very strong pieces. I can feel it, Ashley and Patty. One's going to sell within the next minute or two. I can feel it. Yeah. Boy, they're both such strong pieces. That heart would lie, that, that heart on top would, that would, that's like angel, I mean, that's even better. The color scheme would lighten up any house. Oh, that would go anywhere. That is a stunning original Peter Max, unique acrylic on paper, Peter Max with a registration number. I can feel it. It's going. Somebody needs to buy this one. Melvin, if you're around, this might be for you. Barbara. Rick. Las Vegas. Rick and Melanie. Yeah, I'll work you some deals, but you got to get this. I mean, this is amazing. Look how bright that heart is.
Will say, you ever done any camera work for like a TV series? No. So like the people that do camera are used to for the Big Bang Theory, they got to be top notch, right? Maybe. Any offers, Ashley? You got an offer. Should I worry that pretty boy Floyd is, I feed him so much and he's so skinny? What? Well, I thought he'd fatten up a little bit. He what? Yes. You know what he did have? And, it's, and I and they're pretty much healed five broken ribs from the coyote attack. I saw the x-rays. All right. I'm going to turn off my mic. Oh, and Ashley's beating me up. I just, if you say no, I'm taking it. I'm taking both of the elephants. Yeah. Where were we at? Sure. Just always remember, Ashley, old Chinese saying, he who attacks must vanquish. He who defends must merely survive. I think I got that off of the 1970s Kung Fu, but I'm not sure. You ever watch that with David Carradine, Kung Fu? Yeah. Some deals here. Yeah. That one, yeah, just, uh, I guess you just call that one not too much. So which one did you sell? So far, the Azulay. has gone. Now, who's thinking about the two Peter Maxes? Mr. L and Mr. W, please get back to me. And I, I, I mean this. Let me go to camera two. You've seen me on TV for so long. These are the last two of probably this kind I'm ever going to get. Uh, it's been very, very difficult. And people at the Max headquarters, they're not letting anything go. They're tripling. They're telling people on ships and auctioneers. You got to start up here. I mean, it's just, there's so few left. These are the archival pieces. And this heart is just unbelievable. I mean, I've been looking at that all night. I had one in my house in the early 2000s. 
It was nice, but it didn't have the pop that that has. That is just amazing. And I lowered the price down on that. So call me. I only have nine minutes left. Oh, boy, that is beautiful. Wilson, you're staring at it like I am on the camera. Isn't that hard? Just, just takes your mind away. That is very effective at what it's supposed to do. Okay. Got to turn. Question about Floyd. Okay. <laughs> His five broken ribs have healed. Braveheart. Braveheart. For this. For which one? For this heart. Call it Braveheart. Yeah, that's, I love that. Yeah, Braveheart. Okay. I like it. Yeah, folks. Please, I'm telling you, I can't get any more of these Peter Maxes. We're going to have a period where people are going to be calling every show. Can I get a Peter Max? No. Because I can't get them. Okay. Which one are they interested in, Patty? The flower vase? Uh -huh. Bottom, Patty. So what are your two people? Uh, All right, what do we what do we want to do? I don't want to get any, I don't want to get beat up here. I got you. Just let me know. And look at the large heart. Now that one, that's the one they're negotiating on now. So go to go up one. Yeah. Hang on, everybody hang on, because we're going to sell this right now, one way or another. All right, everybody watch me. If, you, if you're working on this one, please hurry up, hurry up. Not you. I just don't want to. I got five minutes left. That big, large heart, you're going to be kicking yourself. This is something that they get 70, 80, 90,000 for. I'm going to move this aside because I got three people working on this one. But this one at $6,300, look how large it is. If you can... If you can Peter Max, first of all, he's 86. The cruise ships, they can't get him. Nobody, they're all sold out. 
I mean, he's painted a lot of recent, they've been all sold by Max Graphics. So to get an original Peter Max uh, acrylic on paper heart this size for 6,300, they want 70 and 80,000. If you don't believe me, take a cruise. They want at least 65, 70,000 in rough seas. So call me on this. Somebody get this one right now. And on this, Ashley's got a couple people working on it. And I want to thank everybody. I got four minutes left. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do this weekend. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to watch a lot of football and cuss at the TV. No, they've turned out strange, just strange. I've seen some stuff that makes you go, was that for the bookies or was that for the winners? I mean, wow. Well, so... What do they say? Anybody? This heart needs to go, but it's all right. I don't mind hanging on to it. I think Ashley's going to sell this one real fast. I hear a tick. Not a tick like an animal tick. Not like a tick of a time bomb. You know, in the movies, you can always hear that. and You're going, you can't really hear a time bomb. It's like, who would have a time bomb you can hear? Yeah. And has anybody bought the elephant family? Melvin, you should buy that. That's verifying. All right, I got three minutes. Talk to me, folks. Talk to me. Barry Chapel. Is it true the camera adds 40 pounds, Wilson? I got two minutes. Hi. My name is Barry Chapel. This is how Tommy Boy walked. <laughs> Which one are they interested in? Let me get out of the way. That heart is a steel. They both are. Yeah, and I'm down to a minute. Oh. Oh, from Wisconsin, the, uh, the oh, the Packers have been doing amazing. I don't bet on sports. I used to. I gave all of my gambling up a few years ago. I used to love betting on sports. I'd hit a few, lose most of them, but I, I enjoyed it. What made me the most was 20 years ago, 15, when the Cardinals won the World Series. I started betting them 10 bucks, 20, 50 bucks. Every time I could spare it, they were 100 to 1. 150 to 1, and they ended up winning the World Series, and it was a huge payoff. But that sucked me in. But anyway, hey, I got a minute left. Buford, don't kick the dog. And I want to thank everybody. Keep calling. I'm in the studio. This big heart will stun you when you get it home. And uh, don't miss out on that. Hey, I want to thank everybody. What are you going to do if Buford kicks a dog, Wilson? Yeah, that's right. Hey, we love you. We ship fast. Thank you. Bye-bye.